Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 108, at least that's what I think it is, of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Steve Malone. We are coming to you once again from the worldwide headquarters of GSM Services, where we simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. However, today we are not highlighting another great organization, but our next two episodes are going to do that, so please stay tuned. Much to the chagrin of Naomi and Amy, I have convinced them we should talk about Thanksgiving and gratitude, and we are going to be releasing this episode on Thanksgiving 2023. So it just seemed appropriate to talk about all the things we should be grateful for and the general concept of gratitude. Correct, Naomi? Yes. <laughs> I've made also much to her chagrin. I made Naomi be on camera. <laughs> Pretty much. Literally, as she started recording, I said, I might ask you a few questions about this. And she was like, oh, well. I was like, okay, great. <laughs> so it's better to ask, what's the... What's the phrase? Better to ask for forgiveness than permission? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we're doing. So um, I don't want to, I'm not going to get into specifically Thanksgiving necessarily. If you want to learn about the history of Thanksgiving and all about it, I literally Googled one thing and came out with like 20 pages worth of information about Plymouth and the history of Thanksgiving, the origins of the holiday. When was the first Thanksgiving? And unfortunately, like most things in this day and time, there's some controversy around some of it. So I decided I'm not going to talk about that. But what I do want to talk about is the general concept of gratitude and why does it take a holiday every year for us to really think about that? Because I think that being grateful and having gratitude is one of those concepts and I'm not sure traits the right word, but if we can be more grateful all the time, I think it's just better. And so uh, that's kind of where, where I'm headed. I'm going to start with, if you listen to any of our episodes, you've heard me talk about a quote or say a quote at the end of each episode, maybe talk about a book that I've read that I think is worth sharing. But I'm going to go first, I'm going to go through a, a few quotes on gratitude and then also some scripture Um because I think that talks a little, little bit about it um, as well. And I do something every week. If you follow me on social media, or I, I do share. About the only time I'm ever on social media is early Monday mornings. I will send out a quote or thought for the week. I do the same thing here within our company on Monday afternoons, and it's typically the very same quote because I'm lazy. I don't want to come up with two different things each week. But at Thanksgiving, the week of Thanksgiving every year, I, I, there's two different quotes that I – kind of uh, switch off or alternate year to year. So I'm going to read those two and then add another one to it. And this first one comes from Cicero. And so some of this stuff we're talking about goes back to biblical times, the time of when Rome was the thing. And Cicero is a Roman statesman. And he said, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. Now, the other one that I alternate, it comes from a, a lady named Melody Beatty, who said, Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Then my last quote related to gratitude is from Epictetus, who was also, I think he was actually at one time or another a slave um, in Rome. And, and there may be some historians out here who feel free to fact check me on that one. and Just don't email me about it please. But he said, he is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. So those are three good quotes, in my opinion, on gratitude. And I'm of the opinion that if we really take the time to step back and look at our lives, especially here in the United States, we've got it pretty good. In fact, if you do enough research, things are probably overall better than they've ever been. Now, if you pay attention to the news and you read online and you spend so much time on social media, you might be, there are forces out there trying to convince us otherwise. Now, I'm also not a rose-colored glasses kind of person all the time, but things are, in general, better. There are plenty of things that our society needs to work on and we need to get better at. But in general, when you look at things like crime and general poverty, 
Um, it's easy for me to say that because I'm not in that situation, but crime, poverty, the environment, um, just so many things, uh, general prosperity across the world is better um, than it's ever been. But it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day stuff and an event going on because we've got 24-7 news and um, every little thing that we deal with becomes um, disastrous. So uh, I'm going to move on to some scripture that I pulled. Again, I'm, I'm pulling from, the, from the, the, the Christian Bible. And from Psalm 136 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. From Ephesians 5.20, always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 68.19, praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. The point there is, and again, I I realize that we have listeners out there who are not Christians, but if you look at all of the religions, um, if you Google gratitude related to Islam, gratitude related to Judaism, um, of course, some of these are from um, the Old Testament, so that would apply there. But Buddhism, whatever the, your your religion might be, or whatever your view of the world might be, you will, you, you will find that gratitude, giving thanks, thanks, or thanks. <laughs> sorry, Naomi, is is a big part of living better in general. So I know Naomi. I asked her to be on camera because I was threatened to ask her a few questions, and so. She is maybe one of the most faithful persons that I know personally. So I'm going to just kind of throw it out back to Naomi. What do you, when you think about your personal life, your studies of verses, and you know, you are one of the most upbeat people that I know as well. I mean, what what is your thoughts on that before we kind of move on on talking a little more about Thanksgiving and gratitude? Well, for me, there's a scripture, and I can't think of it the where it's at. Um, I think it's in James, but it says. Um, to be thankful for the, even the trials because it increases your endurance. And once your endurance is increased, then you won't be lacking anything, right? And so that scripture applies to all of these because it's easy to say, you know, I'm having a hard time with this or I'm having a hard time with this or this is a terrible trial or God get me out of this, you know. But that scripture, I always think of it because Sometimes I do complain a lot, <laughs> um, but it says to be thankful in everything. So I try to, and then I try to do that is to be thankful for the trials, thankful for the struggles, because I know in return I'm growing and my endurance is enlarging and my capacity is also growing for the things that I'm struggling with, right? So that, you know, one day that same thing that I'm struggling with, it doesn't overtake me, but I'm overtaking it in a sense um, because my capacity is large enough to handle it. Um, and so, not only that, but, you know, there's so many, for me, I, I don't know why my mind thinks this way in the, I guess, the smallest of details, but I typically think, you know, at least I'm breathing, you know, at least I'm able to walk, at least I'm able to talk, I sound like I can barely do it right now, but um, at least I have these things, at least I have a roof over my head, no, it's not the biggest house on this earth, but at least it's a roof, and a lot of people don't have that, and I'm constantly trying to keep myself in that perspective so that pride does not enter in (laughs) because, you know, um, God, he just can't use the prideful. And ultimately, my goal is to be used of God. And not only that, but for God to know me in such a personal level that he can lead me where he needs me to. So you can hear and see, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, why... I asked Naomi to be to to be on and talk a little bit because her ins- I knew her insight on this would be would be better than mine. Whatever. <laughs> and and so, but you, you said a word you used there was perspective. So everything is relative, and everything requires perspective. Um, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to travel to places in the world where it reminds me of how fortunate we are here in the United States, and that perspective is difficult, especially when we're going through some trial. Right. Um, whether it's, gosh, you know, the weather today, right? We're recording this on Tuesday the 21st, and it is raining, raining <laughs> and uh, cold, cooler. Um, however, we need the rain badly, yeah. right? So, frankly, we should be grateful that we do have some rain here. And, right. uh, but when I'm outside or whatever, and our, we know we have team members out working today in this, and we have customers with 
dealing with something mm-hmm. it's not great to be out in. But okay. they have a job. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so perspective is super, super important. Yep. So how do we get better at being grateful? How do we, and I don't just mean, you know, you, know, you grow up and you say grace before you eat. Right, right. I mean, that's, that becomes, I'm afraid, I don't know, when I was a child, that just became a habit. Yes. It so does how, how, how do we really get to where we have a grateful heart consistently and daily? And there's a couple of ways I think you can do that. I mean, perspective is one, uh, putting yourself out there to uh, um, get involved in the community, get involved with organizations that are helping others to who are less fortunate. Um, reading, um, gosh, maybe turning off the news. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, but there's so many different ways, but one way that I've learned and, and, and this came, come straight from one of my mentors, a gentleman named Mark Madison, who got me journaling a long time ago. And it's literally a gratitude list. And, and I typically, if I'm having a good day, I am journaling about something every single day. I mean, of course it's not 365 times a year, but, um, I bet it's 350 times a year that I am journaling and I have start and I do do a gratitude list every single day and that is a a habit that can uh, really help with that um so besides perspective I'm going to read two things and we'll be finished here we're going to we're going to have our shortest episode ever probably right. and which makes Naomi <laughs> very happy when she praise God when I'm asking <laughs> when I'm asking her to speak but how is there anything that you do specifically Naomi related to that to kind of keep that perspective um, I know this is going to maybe sound like a cliche answer, but I ask God to help me with it. That, I mean, that's the biggest thing. God help me to not be prideful. And I think through me asking him to help me with that, he shows me ways that I can be more thankful, if that makes sense. Like, um, cause it's, it's super easy to get into a pride mindset and you don't even realize that you're doing it. And I'm so scared of being prideful that I constantly am like, God, please don't let me be prideful in this. Please don't let me just because I understand the consequences of pride and, and not only, you know, on the spiritual level, but being prideful as a person, you know, I look at people that are prideful and it aggravates me sometimes because I'm like, why are they so arrogant? Why are they so prideful? And I don't want somebody to look at that like that towards me. And so it's a personal thing as far as, you know, that constantly just asking God, help me to not be prideful. And me doing that and me being humble enough to say, God, where is, am I prideful in this area? You know, that's, that's another thing. You've got to kind of humble yourself in order to be able to ask God to help you with your pride. Um, and so I, th- I truly think that's the biggest thing. And it has, my mindset has changed so that I know, okay, um, I'm thankful, you know, for me being able to be awake and me being able to have my limbs because I've asked God to help me with my pride. He has changed my mindset to thinking more grateful versus, oh, I don't have this or, oh, you know, so, yeah. I'm not sure I should read this now. That was, <laughs> um, I'm not sure this is going to be Whatever. worthy of following that. Um, but I mentioned, so thank you, Naomi. That's very insightful. So I mentioned Mark Madison. He's a, an author, somebody I've known for 22 or 23 years. He's actually visited our company multiple times. He's written multiple books. I'm going to pull an excerpt out of one of his books. I don't know if you probably can't see it well enough. This particular, this is called uh, Old Light Through New Windows. This is one of his, excuse me, and the subtitle is 52 Questions That Will Change Your Life. This is one of his more recent books. Uh, The first book I read of his was 23, 24 years ago called Freedom From Fear. Again, I I would encourage you to look him up. And he's got a chapter on gratitude, but I'm going to read an excerpt here and then talk a little bit about this one of those books where he's got some exercise at the end. So here goes. You cannot be grateful and unhappy at the same time. There are certain laws that operate whether we are aware of them or not. They are Thomas laws, immutable principles that just are. Gratitude is one of those mysterious laws. The more gratitude we have, the more abundance we receive. The more cynical and ungrateful we are, the less we get. By becoming grateful, we set in motion a kind of magnet, attracting people, emotions, and attitudes that foster abundance. I don't completely understand it, but hey, I don't understand why my wife likes cut flowers. I buy them, they eventually die and are thrown away. However, I understand the effect. Oh, she exclaims, so I keep buying them. Gratitude is like that. When you combine gratitude with positive expectations, something magic happens. 
you become an inverse paranoid. Let me repeat that. You become an inverse paranoid, someone who feels strongly that the world is out to give them as opposed to the world is being out to get them. You become someone who believes the world is good. Great things just start happening. Great people show up in your life. Great days become the norm. So how do I foster an attitude of gratitude? Begin by making a gratitude list. So this is where I got that concept from 20 plus years ago. It probably took me another 10 years before I started doing it on occasion. And it's probably another five or six years before I started doing it really consistently. After you open my journal today, every single day, there'll be a gratitude list in there with four or five things listed. So in this particular exercise, it was what are 10 things or people for which you are grateful? Make your list now. And they want you to do it without thinking. So I'll, at, the, at the risk of embarrassing myself, <laughs> I'm going to read exactly what I wrote down the first time I did this. Janet, my wife, my kids, Alex, Hannah, and Rachel, my business partner and brother, Joel, the Gastonia community, Copper, our dog, my parents, lucky to have the parents that I have, NC State, Western Carolina, and Appalachian State, my F3 group and the Shield Lock, uh, good books, and my GSM family. So those are the, th- the first 10 things that came to mind. Now, what I realized is doing all this, you know, just when you have a chance to s- stand back and um, think about it, sometimes that's embarrassing because, you know, maybe I should have said God, but Jesus. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. So, you know, that's also a reminder of, 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 of what you, um, you know, really should be grateful for. But anyway, um, and the back of this chapter has a quote from Bill Wilson, who's the co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. And he said, I try hard to hold fast to the truth that a full and thankful heart cannot entertain great conceits. When brimming with gratitude, one's heartbeat must surely result in outgoing love, the finest emotion that we can ever know. So again, a great book. I would encourage you to go find it and, and, and read it and <clears throat> make sure Mark Madison knows that you, I'm the one that suggested it. So I want to finish with... Uh, another excerpt from an actually, it actually, it's something that I've been studying the last couple of years is the st- is stoicism. And I get a daily email, or maybe not every single day, but I, um, one of my current um, daily devotionals is the daily stoic. And then there's an email that goes out. This one actually goes back to 2019. And um, Ryan Holiday is who puts these concepts out. And, these, and this happened to be an email and it was called, Be Grateful for Everything, Even the Tough Stuff. So this kind of goes back to what Naomi mentioned earlier, but even through our trials, can, can we be grateful? So I'm again, just like the book, episode, I'm just going to read this. On this day of American Thanksgiving, we're supposed to make time for thanks, to actively think about the word that has become almost cliche in wellness circles, gratitude. But what is gratitude? Some people think of it as being thankful for all the good things you have in your life. Others see it as the act of acknowledging what people have done for you or what you appreciate about others. While the Stoics would have agreed that was all important, they practiced a slightly different form of gratitude. It was more inclusive and counterintuitive. It wasn't just about being grateful for the good, but for all of life. Convince yourself that everything is the gift of the gods was how Marcus Aurelius put it. That things are good and always will be. The first key word there is everything. The other key word is convince, meaning you have to tell yourself that it's all good, even the so-called bad stuff. Let me repeat that one. You have to tell yourself that it's all good. Is it possible to be grateful for the nine-hour travel delay that has you sleeping on a bench in the airport? Is it possible to be grateful for the injury that occurred that is keeping you from exercising like you want to? Is it possible to be grateful for the business failure that you are currently experiencing? Is it possible to be grateful for the leak in your roof that caused damage to your home? It's not easy to be grateful for any of this, but it is possible. In the discourses, Epictetus, who is someone I quoted earlier, says, It is easy to praise providence for anything that may happen if you have two qualities, a complete view of what has actually happened in each instance, and a sense of gratitude. On the surface, much of what we're upset about or wish hadn't occurred is so objectionable that gratitude seems impossible. But if we can zoom out for the more complete view, understanding and appreciation can emerge. First off, as Naomi said earlier, you're alive. That's the silver lining of every bad situation and should not be forgotten. But second, everything that has happened and is happening is bringing you to where you are. It's contributing to the person you have become, and that's a good thing. This understanding, Epictetus said, helps you see the world in full color, in the color of gratitude. The Stoics believe that we should feel gratitude for all the people and events that form our lives. We shouldn't just be thankful for the gifts we receive in our relationships with friends and family. 
We should also be aware of and grateful for the setbacks and annoyances, for the difficult co-workers and the nagging in-laws, for the stress they put on us, and whatever other difficulties we might be experiencing. Right. That's a tough one, right? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because it's all of those things, interconnected and dependent on each other, that made you who and what you are today. It is only by seeing the totality of things, good and bad, that you gain the understanding necessary to be truly grateful. It could be that terrible relationship that imploded spectacularly, but which led you to meeting the love of your life. It could even be the passing of a relative, something that caused you great sadness, but which also spurred you to build stronger relationships with your loved ones. All of these things are sad, and they may not even lead to a happy ending, but they still define the course of your life, and it wouldn't be you sitting there right now without them. So as gather around your family and friends this Thanksgiving or Christmas or any other celebration you might partake in, take the time to appreciate the moment and give thanks for all the obvious and bountiful gifts that moments present. But also be sure to be thankful for everything in your life, both the good and the bad, because it's in seeing all of those things and understanding their impact that you gain the ability to express true gratitude. Well... Um, Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like those things for a number of reasons. Number one, when I you hear people read these things, I listen to a lot of podcasts and read a lot. And sometimes I think the people that are expressing these thoughts are just they've got it all together. Right. Well, the reality is these are all things that for me, it's like for me personally, that I just consistently are trying to work on and be better at. I know I've got so much work to to be done personally. Whether Same. that's humility or whatever that comes from, it's from maybe screwing up so many times in my life. But I do know and believe strongly that if you can, if you can attack each day, so to speak, with a a heart of gratitude and a mind of gratitude, that uh, everything else will um, just be better. And so I would encourage you to maybe start a gratitude list, or just anything related to that, especially. Today, if you happen to be listening to this on Thanksgiving 2023, I would encourage you to do that. And just think, I mean, talking about something that's to be grateful for and strange is I'm here we are recording this podcast in a conference room that is going to be available, frankly, forever. Um, That's weird, but it's just one of the things to be grateful for Mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have thought. I mean, can you imagine somebody... 20 years ago or whenever that thought something like this could even occur. So again, it, it's, if we just look and open our eyes, I think there's plenty for us to be grateful about. Yep. So I'm going to stop there. Naomi, any last words? If you're being grateful, you can't be hateful. <laughs> that is re- That's it. <laughs> I heard that right before we started recording and that might be the title of the, of the, the episode. episode, but we'll see. I'll let, I'll let Naomi decide what to do that. So again, I appreciate your time and, Hope you enjoy a good Thanksgiving and holiday season with your families and, and look ahead for in the coming episodes. We do have some great uh, guests uh, that we'll, um, we, we will be releasing on the next few episodes. So, as always, thanks again for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email, which is podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please follow us on all our social media platforms. And I'm not sure about this episode, but Naomi does say five stars is great. We'll see about this one. And thanks, Naomi, for listening to me ramble today. Gastons Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. (laughs) 